Hey guys, so this is gonna be my first video on some acrylic pour painting projects. I'm really excited about, um, I've only gotten into this in the last few weeks, but like the few projects that I've done so far, I'm just like, oh my God, this is so much fun. I've been doing mandalas, I've been doing um, trees, I've been doing watercolors and just like all sorts of different things, but I don't know, when I, when I started getting into the pouring and then like playing around with some resin, I'm like, this is totally for me. Now don't think that I won't go back to, you know, making mandalas. I actually think because of this, I will know how to make mandalas even better um, because now I know like, how to mix paints and how to get the paints to be less sticky and to flow better. So I'm really excited. Um, I feel like this has opened up a whole new world to me. Um, also, you can meet the dogs. So uh, you'll probably hear them barking at some point. So I have Blaze, my big full-size Aussie. I have Glory, my ball-obsessed miniature Aussie. And then I have Ira, which is a very large Shetland sheep dog. She was supposed to be very small. So anyway, they will probably be interrupting at some point today. So I apologize for that in advance. And you may hear my kids come down or my husband come down. But anyway, um, I know I've shared some like fast forward videos of my work before on Instagram and Facebook. But I thought like maybe I would give you a little bit longer of a video on YouTube and just kind of talk more about the process and um, go from there. So um, I'm going to get the paint set up real quick um, and then we're going to get started with two pours that I've been looking forward to all week. I've just been like daydreaming about them and like what if I can do this? Um, so yeah, let me get the, the stuff set up and I'm going to show you the two tree paintings I've done so far, um, which is kind of inspiring, um, the acrylic pour painting that I'm going to be doing on a canvas today. I'm going to attempt to do a tree. I've literally never seen anybody do this. Um, and it doesn't mean that they haven't, um, I've, like I said, I've only just gotten into this and... Okay, so before I flood the canvas and then accidentally get paint on my other paintings, I figured, okay, let me just start off by showing you my trees and maybe you can see what I'm going for. So this was my first ever attempt at a watercolor. My tree ended up being a little bit bigger than expected, but I loved the the background colors. I think the the actual real... Oh, it was like real night, nighttime blue it was just a little bit too dark. I should have gone with like a brighter blue. Um, but I still think that the tree being too big for, for the world that it's in is kind of cool. It kind of says something and speaks of my love of trees. Um, and so again, this was my first ever watercolor and I used Arteza, like the water um, brush pens, the watercolor brush pens, which were really cool. And then I use the water um, activator over it. And it was actually a really neat process and I'll definitely be playing around with this some more as well. Um, now, previously to that, I was into the whole like mandala and everything being a uh, circle. And so I thought like, what would it, it would be really cool to put these colors behind it. Um, I think everything worked out well, except for this, um, this shimmery brown color I thought was going to be a little bit more uh, transparent or, than it is and it turned out to be pretty opaque. Um, so I think it just kind of messed with the whole thing, the whole thing I was going for but it's still really cool and again this is only like one of my, my I, I never even knew I could draw right so like this is like just only one of my few things that I've done so far where I drew um, but I like it. So I think knowing that you'll see where I'm trying to go in my, um, painting today. And, um, so now I'm going to hide those so they don't get paint splattered all over them and I'm going to flood the canvas and I'll be okay. right back. Now, again, I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work, if it's even possible for this to work. So I might end up scraping all of this paint off of my canvas which would not be the first time I had to do that. Um, so I'm gonna try to make a tree. 
Um, let's see if it's even possible. <laughs> so I am first going to use my um, Deep Green by um, Creative Inspirations. Um, and I'm actually gonna pour a little bit of it in here because I don't have any little cups right now. Um, I'm probably gonna need a little bit more than that. Uh, let's see, and I'm going to try to make a line in the paint here. Hopefully, we're just gonna use the same little thing to kind of save the trees. Um, would hate to have more trees cut down than need to be in this world. And so I've come to realize in my life that I'm a bit of a tree hugger. Recently we had um, some county officials where we live notify us that they are wanting to cut down some of our hundred year old oaks and poplars on our property and um, all to put in a new water main for the county. And it's really odd because normally utilities are run along the, the sides of the roads. And this time they seem to be wanting to run um, this water main through the woods, which is just really strange. Um, now I'm going to use, um, this is, uh, Arteza, Arteza's, uh, fairy tale. It's an iridescent color. Um, and I used a little bit of paint I found at Hobby Lobby. It was a really beautiful turquoise color. And I just kind of put a drip drop of that in there. So we will see what this does. But anyway, what I was saying is that they are... Um, trying to run this um, through the woods, which again just seems really strange um, because again, normally, oops, I just knocked that off its level. Normally, uh, utilities are run along the road. And so I had a meeting with the county officials and I was like, look, you know, I have three tiny little acres here where I live and I love them deeply and I love every tree that's on my property. Like, why are you doing this? And um, they basically said, oh, it's to save the taxpayers, you know, $500 million. And it's like, okay, how can I really argue with that? Um, so we actually got them to, I told them I was gonna strap myself to um, one of the trees out there in chains and they laughed at me they said it wouldn't be the first time that someone has done that and so um and i said well you know i work for a labor organization i bet you we could all get everybody to pitch together we could do it <laughs> but luckily they liked me so much in all of our conversations this is the um metallic onyx uh Create and not creative inspiration, craft smart paint um, that I got at Michael's. Um, and I'm just kind of putting it in here for a little bit of like um, different colors. <coughs> Blaze, thank you for protecting me, but we're fine. Um, just to give it a little contrast, obviously I've spilled some blue here, so I'm going to have to figure out a better way to do this in the future. But everything is a learning process, I have found, with doing this kind of painting project. And, um, and I've loved every bit of learning we can do.
gonna try my no straw. So I've decided it doesn't look anything like a tree. Go figure! But I'm still kind of enjoying just playing with it even if I feel like I'm about to pass out. I am starting to see some cells forming here and over here and over here. So I'm kind of let, gonna let them play out a little bit and see what I can get out of this. Again, it's not exactly a tree, but it is something. Um, at this point, I still might scrape it all off. So we, we shall see. Can stare at this for a minute while I'm trying not to lose all of my breath. I don't know. The composition of it seems kind of off. I feel like there's more white space down here than there are in any of the other corners. So I think what I'm going to try to do is blow that way a bit and see what we can get. So let's try that. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Definitely not a tree. Um, but the way that these colors mix, like this almost looks like almost like outer spacey over here. And it's just really, really neat. And I love all the like white ripples. It's almost got like a ponding effect. I'm not really loving this green spot over here because it's like just super green. So I think I'm gonna try to blow on it a little bit more and apparently I have a paint all over my necklace. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try to blow on this a little bit more so we can get a little bit less of this like globby green thing that I've got going on here. And we'll see what we come up with. There. Really neat. So, I'm, all right, dogs. So I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna bring you guys down to look at it, and uh, we'll see what you think. I just love the mixture of the paints and like the swirls. It's it's pretty magical. Like I said, it almost looks like it has stars in it, a little outer spacey, but definitely has those earth tones I was looking for. Not getting my tree, guys. I'm going to have to um, keep practicing to figure out how the heck to do that. Um, but it will come. One of these. I really love that spot right there. That is just like so cool. I wonder if I should just do like a copper and black piece one of these days. Um, let me know what you think if I should, if you think I should do one of those because copper and black, I just, I really love those colors. Even with the dioxazine purple, like you can see, like it mixes right there and it just looks so incredible. Like, like I said, outer space, like, um, so if you think I should do those colors, comment down below. 